Another important concept in AudioWeaver is how pins and wires are managed. Here's a simple system, and you can see at the input pin that it's stereo, block size of 32, has a sample rate of 48 kilohertz. And so uh, all the processing here is stereo, and if I go up here on the view menu, I can select wire info. And for each wire in the system, you're gonna see the properties that we talked about. Now suppose I wanna change the block size. Well, I would right click on the system input pin, change it say from 32 to 64 samples, and then I would have to press the propagate changes button. What happens is what we call pin propagation. We start at the system input pin and then propagate the properties to all the connected modules. So that includes block size, number of channels, sample rate. Most modules will, will operate on multiple channels of data. So I could configure this from two channels to six channels, hit the pin propagation button, and now everything is six channels. Even the level meter would be showing six channels. So again, you set the input pin properties, and then you press the propagate changes bu button, and that transfers all the wire and pin data, and it also updates the output pin. You can't manually change the output pin properties, rather they're inherited from the connected wire. So let's talk about how the layout interfaces to the IO on the target hardware. So each AudioWeaver system has a single hardware input pin and a single hardware output pin. If you have multiple channels, then the data is interleaved on these pins. You should check the documentation for your hardware target to understand the channel ordering. For example, on the STM32H747 discovery board, there's eight inputs, two USB followed by two ADC followed by two D mics. There's also four outputs. First two go to the DAC, next two are USB audio back on the PC. So you can manually change the properties of the system input pin as we saw a few minutes ago. So you can, uh, you can change the sample rate, but the sample rate must match the sample rate of the hardware. The configured sample rate is only used for design equations. It doesn't affect the sample rate of the target hardware. You can also change the block size, and the block size has to be a multiple of what's called the target's basic or fundamental block size. If you look on the server window, you'll see that it shows the basic block size, and for this target, it's 48 samples. That means I can run the processing at any multiple of 48 samples. And finally, number of channels. The hardware has some number of channels, and the layout can also have a different number of channels. We're gonna talk about that in a bit. So the basic block size, it corresponds typically to the DMA size used for all audio IO. So that's kind of built into the firmware of the BSP used for your target. And so audio is passed to the Aucor library in blocks of the basic block size. So the Aucor library does internal buffering on the input and output pins and can handle any multiple of the basic block size. So you get this automatically built in and so you can adjust the block size without having to recompile. There's trade-off between larger and smaller blocks. Typically, smaller blocks are more memory efficient but take more processing power. Larger blocks, more efficient in terms of processing, but take more memory. Another principle in AudioWeaver is what we call hardware channel count matching. So I could create a layout in Designer with four input and four output channels. I can build and run, and it still works even if the physical hardware only has two channels. What's happening here? Well, on the input side, there's channel count matching. So if there's two physical channels and four channels in my block diagram, then the physical channels are copied to the first two processing channels and channels three and four are set to zero. Similarly, if I have four physical channels, but my layout only uses two, then I take the first two and I ignore the last two. Similar thing happens on the output. If there's more physical channels, any Extra physical channels are filled with zeros, and if there's fewer physical channels, then I ignore output channels from the layout. 